Good morning and welcome to Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy. I'm your pharmacist, Paul White. We're glad you joined us this morning. It's hard to believe, but we've been cel we're celebrating our 10th anniversary of the Health Matters radio program. We're planning some special shows to celebrate this milestone, so hope you'll stay with us. So let's begin today by thanking our sponsors, Cleveland Clinic Mercy Hospital and Studio Arts and Glass, and of course, our socially distant technical producer, J.D. DeAngelis. Joining me is Brad White, a compounding pharmacist, and our special guests, Dr. J. Michael Kramer, MD, MBA, Chief Informatics Officer, Ohio Health, Susan Davis, Executive Director of the Arthritis Foundation's Central Ohio Office, and Christopher Haverlock, Associate Director of Community Engagement with the Arthritis Foundation of Central Ohio. Good morning, and welcome to our show. Good morning. Arthritis is a very common, but not well understood, Actually, arthritis is not a single disease. It is an informal way of referring to a joint or pain, joint pain or joint disease. There are more than a hundred different types of arthritis and related conditions. People of all ages, sexes, and races in, that have arthritis, people of all ages, races, and sexes can have arthritis, and it's the leading cause of disability in America. More than 50 million adults and 300,000 children also have some type of arthritis. Arthritis can be very debilitating, frustrating, and life-changing, but the messages of the Arthritis Foundation is to say yes when arthritis says no. That uplifting and encouraging message of hope is meant to lift up arthritis sufferers with knowledge, education, and community support. This morning, we're going to talk about three types, about the types of arthritis, how to manage arthritis, and perhaps most importantly, how to live with arthritis as we say yes to life. We'd like to remind our listeners today that our program is also available on our podcast. Look for Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy in your favorite podcast app, and please subscribe. So, Dr. Kramer, let's start with you. Please take a moment, introduce yourself to our listeners, and please share your roles both at Ohio Health and at the Arthritis Foundation. Well, Paul, I'm a, I'm a med peds doctor. I train in internal medicine and pediatrics, so... Uh, when I was practicing, I was doing primary care uh, medicine, taking care of kids and families. I've always been really interested in chronic disease, diseases like diabetes and arthritis, things that really impact our community that are widespread. And moreover, I've been interested in the secondary complications of these diseases. A lot of folks with arthritis have depression, sleepness, the sleeplessness, chronic pain, uh, so I've, I've actually then transitioned my career into information technology and lead the electronic medical record systems for Ohio Health. And with, the, with those systems, we have the ability to understand our communities, understand the secondary complications of disease, and really uh, try to bring the resources to support folks that are suffering from arthritis and its secondary complications. So it's, it's, uh, it's quite a, um, to go from medical school to technology and to be able to serve my community, I, I'm really blessed. So Susan and Christopher, if you would each introduce yourselves and explain your roles at the Arthritis Foundation. Sure, um, good morning everyone. My name is Susan Davis and I'm the executive director of the Central Ohio Arthritis Foundation. Um, I'm basically in charge of everything that we do that's in uh, Franklin and all the contiguous and surrounding counties. We uh, serve half the state of Ohio with education and research around arthritis. And I am Christopher Haberlock, the associate director here in, in, in uh, Columbus, um, again, working alongside of Susan Davis um, on everything, you know, uh, pertaining to, to our community and, and ensuring that people are feeling connected and engaged with our, our movement. So, so why don't we start with this? Um, are certain people more at risk for arthritis than others? Yeah, for sure. Uh, you know, Brad talked about uh, over 100 different types of arthritis, and many of those forms of arthritis uh, have a genetic uh, uh, reason for why we develop that arthritis. Uh, as we look at those genetics, if we look at our family histories, you can see patterns uh, that go across generations, and we're starting to understand that. You know, it used to be, you know, when I trained in medical school back in the 90s, we said, oh, osteoarthritis, it's just it's overuse, you know, somebody had a, a joint injury. And we're really understanding now that there are underlying predispositions in our immune system 
in the cartilage and the cells that make up the joints um, that are likely uh, heritable and, and part of our uh, genetic makeup. Um, I think that's one of the reasons why the Arthritis Foundation really promotes advocacy for research. Um, we are just starting to see the tip of the iceberg in understanding the, the underlying causes and predispositions, and hopefully uh, the ability to prevent and cure. Hmm. I don't expect you to tell me all the hundred of them. <laughs> Arthritis types. <laughs> but yeah. what, what types of arthritis are there? Well, the, you know, if you think about the five most common, what we see the most in the primary care office, you know, osteoarthritis is number one. Uh, and, and, you know, again, we, we see our parents suffer from it and it tends to be later in age um, that we develop osteoarthritis. Another uh, very common is rheumatoid arthritis. And, and that tends to be much more inflammatory in nature. In other words, the immune system is activated. It tends to be very debilitating earlier in, in life. Um, and, and we treat that with uh, a number of immunomodulating drugs to, to really hit it early and prevent the, the permanent uh, damage to the joints. We also have psoriatic arthritis, uh, again, um, something that, that can be earlier in life. Um, and you've probably heard about gout, you know, recurring, mm -hmm. You know, uh, joint pain tends to be in the feet and, you know, great toe. Um, and uh, that again, you know, we can treat that and, and make it less common. And then another uh, that is probably the fifth most common is, is lupus. And lupus comes with a myriad of symptoms, including um, uh, uh, joint disease, but also unusual rashes of the face and hands and body. And then it, it can also mm -hmm. be as uh, with serious complications such as cerebral vascular, uh, you know, kind of a stroke or uh, injury to the brain and, and blood vessels in the brain. And it can be very, very debilitating. So those are the five most common that we see and we take care of uh, uh, very commonly. So how do you diagnose uh, arthritis? Well, you know, again, there kind of a medical question and I, you know the arthritis foundation doesn't want to get into you know what a physician does but as a primary care physician i can say uh very often patients come to us with complaints in the you know when you have a relationship with a with a, a doctor and and over time you might describe hey i had a joint pain last week and then it happened again two months before or three months before and it it seems to be recurring and those patterns uh, show up when in your conversation with your doctor, and that gets us curious about looking for an underlying cause. Um, sometimes uh, good advice is to ask patients to keep a diary uh, so that we can understand those patterns better and zero in on what, what the cause might be. Subsequently, then we would run some tests, tests of your immune system uh, that are associated with arthritis. Um, sometimes those are positive and tell us what's going on and sometimes not. Um, so hopefully that, that helps, but uh, every one of these diseases has its own pattern. Every one of these diseases has its own laboratory tests uh, and primary care physician is probably the best place to start. Hmm. You know, one thing we've seen in the pharmacy over the last year, especially is that a lot of patients have had their regular checkups canceled or delayed. And um, maybe you could just take a moment. I, I know that... Um, as a physician, I'm sure you can comment on how important it is to have your annual checkup with your primary care physician. And if you don't have a primary care physician to, to seek one out, but could you comment on how important it is to, to do that, especially if you've been maybe delayed in checking in with your primary care doctor and, and how not to let things fester and continue to build before you seek medical care? That's a great question, Brad. And, and we are when we look at the numbers of patients that are delaying care, it's a really big problem right now. And uh, whether you've been diagnosed with arthritis and you've missed follow-ups or you're suspicious you might have a problem that needs to be addressed, um, it, it's, it's time to get back into the office or it's time to, to schedule a video visit. Um, we are, Ohio Health, Cleveland Clinic, many of our major health systems now have uh, telehealth. Uh, it's easy. Um, we're finding that about 85% of our patients 
the first time they try the technology, they're successful. So um, really want to get you connected with our with our physicians and not miss any important visits. Um, and, and again, you know, think about this. Um, you know, we don't we don't want you. You know, if you're if you're worried about COVID, but then end up with a serious complication from arthritis, what what have we done? Uh, we really don't mm -hmm. want you to end up suffering uh, because you are afraid to get care and we can definitely get you care uh, through a variety. Right. Maybe you can comment in a general fashion on how arthritis can be treated. You know, in the pharmacy, we hear patients on a weekly basis that they don't want to go to the doctor because they don't want to be taking more pills or have a surgery or find out they have to take injections. I mean, with many different types of arthritis, there's a lot of different treatment options, but patients shouldn't fear the treatment option. Can you comment on that? Well, I, I think that, um, again, that's kind of getting into a medical um, area that uh, we really want you to consult with your pharmacist and your doctors about those medications. Um, and again, arthritis is such a diverse number of diseases, but it's, it, we have a lot of good therapies. We understand the side effects and that consultation with your providers and pharmacists is going to help understand that. Um, Brad, I don't know if that answered your question, but I, I want to be reassuring. And I, I think, you know, you don't necessarily have to go into the doctor uh, to understand what your options are, a telehealth visit, a phone call, um, you know, uh, using a, you know, electronic message, um, you can get your questions answered. There's no reason not to. Very good. You, you know, over the years as a pharmacist, um, um, talked to a lot of people with arthritis and, 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 you know, the vast majority of them are, are really in pain. And it, like Brad just question, question is, you know, well, gosh, I don't want to go to the doctor. Can you give me something, you know, that sort of thing. And, and, uh, and the pain, and obviously having not experienced, uh, you know, what some of these people experience must be overwhelming. And my thinking as an individual is that pain has a has a way of um, um, challenging everything you try to do, uh, like reading a book and sit there, and you know, and just things that that you thought in the past were simple. So it, it, to me, it, it just it's amazing to to hear what some of these people say and how much pain they're really in. Um, so, uh, oh, I could add to that. I we are involved in a uh, nationwide survey of patients with arthritis. It's called the Insight Survey. And we'll talk a little bit about that, I think, in a minute. But 92% uh, of patients with arthritis say that it interferes with, uh, with their day-to-day -day lives, 92%. You know, so you think about how functional you were when you were young, you know, being able to do day-to-day -day activities, play sports, get exercise. And now with a diagnosis of arthritis, 92% say they can't do those day-to-day -day things. Hmm. Um, so we're launching a nationwide pain campaign. We'll be rolling out a mobile app and we'll be really focusing our energies of the Arthritis Foundation on that work. So you're gonna hear from us in the coming months about ways that you can manage your pain. And that doesn't have to be through drugs. Uh, it can be through various methods of relaxation, mobility, um, uh, various activities, uh, exercises, and we're gonna allow and help overcome that pain and get to yes. Um, so more to come, uh, look for, for opportunities to engage with the Arthritis Foundation in that regard. Okay, you know, it's time for a break. Um, you're listening to Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy. Welcome back to Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy. Brad and I are discussing arthritis with Dr. Michael Kramer, Susan Davis, and Christopher Haverlock from the Arthritis Foundation. Okay, I wanted to let everybody know that if you're following us today on Facebook Live, um, in our links, um, on our post, we have a link to the survey that um, we've been talking about this morning and are going to talk about some more. So if you have arthritis and you'd like to share your experience, um, the Arthritis Foundation would really be grateful for you to share what you are experiencing to help other patients with arthritis around the country. 
So we were talking about um, arthritis diagnoses and treatments and the, the many different kinds of arthritis that are out there. Is there anything we can do, doctor, to prevent arthritis? Just as, you know, good habits? Well, Brad, I, you know, again, the advice is going to be very specific to one of the different kinds of arthritis. Um, I think obviously, you know, protecting your health in general is probably very important. And I think, um, you know, in this day and age, doing those kinds of preventative things that, that our primary care physicians help you with, uh, you know, your vaccine, staying up to date with your vaccinations, right now getting your COVID vaccination. We don't want somebody that has arthritis to then end up with a secondary complication of flu or, or um, uh, coronavirus. Um, there are obviously some things that we can do in terms of protecting ourselves uh, as we participate in athletics and avoiding joint injury and, and so forth. Um, uh, so there's, there's, there's probably not any specific thing that I could say would, would help you avoid arthritis other than maintaining your good health and being aware of the medical history and the risks that you have otherwise uh, in maintaining that good health. Very good. Okay, so Susan and Christopher, how about uh, you guys tell our listeners about the Arthritis Foundation and um, where was it, how to get started and, and what is your focus on your, your direction on a daily basis to help patients suffering from arthritis? Thanks so much, Brad. Um, so the Arthritis Foundation is a national organization. We're all across the country. We have 76 offices across the United States. Here in central Ohio, um, we're, as I said earlier, we're responsible for half the state. And um, what we basically do is bring programming, um, information, tools, and resources to the community of people with arthritis, whether it's the 300,000 kids across the country who have arthritis or whether it's any of the adults of 54 million um, people across the country that have arthritis. Now in Ohio, that is about 2.6 million people and that includes about 5,000 kids. So we're very fortunate to have um, um, a lot of healthcare providers who are partnering with us. Um, that includes physicians, uh, primary care, rheumatology, um, orthopedics, physical therapy, occupational therapy, and then a lot of different folks um, in businesses and corporations across the country that support what we do. Um, we have a lot of online tools that we um, have available for people. We do have um, in-person programming when COVID allows us to do that as well. Um, we do um, special education days for people with arthritis and we, we uh, concentrate on kids with arthritis and do special days for them and their families as well. The biggest thing that we do um, in the medical community is we're kind of the gap provider of information when um, people have that span of time between when they do get to see their doctor. A lot of times, um, especially with rheumatology, which is the primary um, medical group that deals with people with um, any kind of a rheumatological disorder as well as primary care, um, it's hard to get in to see them. There's not enough of them across the country. And um, so we try to provide information, help, resources, community in between times. And Mike already um, mentioned that our primary tool right now is our um, insights assessment. And so it's really important um, that anybody who has arthritis be willing to fill that survey out. It takes about 10 minutes. It's online. It's quick. Uh, we get the data back in an aggregate form. We do ask you for your email and some demographic information, but we still don't know who you are because it all comes back in aggregate form. Um, but we're using that data to decide based on what people are telling us in the arthritis community, what programming they want, what kind of tools they want to manage their pain, what kind of information do they need in their day-to-day -day activities. Um, and I can tell you as a person who suffers from rheumatoid arthritis, um, we have a wealth of information um, on our website, arthritis.org. You can look up pretty much anything that we've already talked about today. So, um, and then of course we have local events, both mission oriented and fundraising oriented to um, supply 
what's needed to get that education and research um, out there for people with arthritis. Well, I guess we have to break for the news, folks. <laughs> We'd like to keep on going here. Um, thanks for joining us this morning on Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy. Okay, gang, we're back. Um, just a quick reminder that Janssen's COVID vaccine is available for immunization at all of our medicine center pharmacies, Canton, Lewis, Sil, Minerva, and New Philadelphia. So we got a lot more to cover this morning, so let's get back to the show. Okay, how has COVID changed the Arthritis Foundation community? Uh, Brad, like a lot of other charitable nonprofit organizations, um, COVID certainly impacted us. I mean, giving was way down initially for us and for other organizations, mm -hmm. order of like 85%. Um, you know, so we had to do a hard, a hard pivot, you know, in terms of how we're, we're staffed and how we're organized. Um, uh, but also, you know, we, we really kind of double down on what, what is most important um, to us, and that is, you know, caring for our community of, of warriors, as we call them, you know. So um, we did what we do best, which is to care and, you know, we did a, a lot of phone calls, and certainly there's been a, a lot of Zoom meetings, but, you know, our, our community already feels very isolated, and, and that has uh, um, been amplified during the pandemic. So. You know, it's been our, our priority to make sure that people feel um, that they're a part of a community that cares. And we've been doing a lot of that. You know, we pivoted also to, to, to doing a lot of things virtually where we were able to, you know, we took our, our events um, to the virtual space and, and managed to um, and continue to manage to do our, our good work that way. Um, so as an organization right now, we're, we're on stable footing and uh, extremely committed and continue to be committed to our cause and, and to our mission. So, hmm. Interesting. I noticed in the 2021 Insights Report, How It Hurts, your annual findings on the impact of arthritis pain. Can you tell our listeners about arthritis pain and the foundation's new pain app? I would love to be able to do that, Paul. Um, so back in 2019, we launched our insights assessment. And over the course of a little over a year, we collected 20,000 responses across the country to this report. And we came out with our first mandate for action where we reported about what that was. And then we collected 20,000 more. So we're up to about 40,000 at this point. We need many thousands more, don't get me wrong, but we're really excited about um, the current number that we have, the respondents. What we found out from that first um, report to the second one is the whole impact of pain in the arthritis community. As Mike already reported earlier in our broadcast, 92% of people suffering from arthritis have pain that, that stops them from doing their normal everyday activities. Um, and what we're doing is um, giving you a tool that you can use on your device that will help feed you information based on your everyday experiences. So it hasn't come out yet. As we mentioned, it's going to be coming and we're gonna have a big launch of what it is, but um, I'll tell you it's named Vim, V-I-M, that doesn't stand for anything, though. That's just the name of the app. Um, but what you'll do is you'll set up an account and you will start, um, based on the information that you give us, you'll start getting um, interactive information back on the app based on what you tell us your needs are. And it's all based on pain and how that interferes with your activities. So it's very exciting. But the main point of this is we listened to those 40,000 people who said we have pain as our major factor in dealing with our everyday life activities. And this is the result of those um, 40,000 insights assessments, the data that we collected. So we're super excited about it. And we know that it's gonna be a really great tool for people with arthritis to use in the community. What about, um, I found an article on your website that discusses alternative methods for dealing with arthritis pain. Can you um, talk to our listeners about this? Sure. There's a myriad of ways uh, that a person can manage their, their arthritis pain. Um, there are a 
common quick fixes, heat treatment, cold treatments, over-the-counter medications, um, stabilizing devices like splints and braces and, and sleeves, um, maybe a shoe insert are, are things that are readily available and, and are helpful. Moving more is always good advice. You know, we say motion is lotion. So trying to get 30 minutes or so of activity each day, even if it were in 10 minute doses is, is a really good idea. Um, stress, stress soothers, you know, meditating, anything that kind of brings, you know, a sense of calm. And, and I'd say also like any, you know, mental health care in general is, is always a good idea. Anything that can help a person create a more positive outlook, you know, so staying engaged in, in hobbies and things that you're passionate about and that just give you a general sense of feeling good. Um, sleep hygiene, better sleep is always a good idea. So the things that you can do to, to promote better sleep, you know, maybe it's a warm bath before bed, um, refraining from drinking alcohol too close to going to bed. Anything that's going to encourage you a better night's rest is going to be helpful. Um, you know, additional therapies like massage and acupuncture certainly, certainly have shown, you know, some, some benefits. Good nutrition always is always recommended. No specific diets are going to be endorsed by the Arthritis Foundation. Good nutrition makes the most sense. And then there's a lot of, you know, a lot of buzz going on about the use of, of CBD. Uh, the Arthritis Foundation doesn't take uh, a, a, an endorsement stance with this, you know, but topical sort of uh, CBD treatments um, are showing some positive uh, benefits for people living with arthritis. Um, certainly, you know, with these or any of these, you know, you want to talk to your, your primary care physician and see what makes the most sense for you uh, before doing anything. So, well, in my time in the pharmacy, I think I've heard every remedy in the world out there that people have come up with. And I, uh, has the Arthritis Foundation zeroed in on anything that is, that is in the, you know, not in the prescription environment, I would say, uh, that really works or, um are we still struggling with that and, and i come from a period at pharmacy where um we didn't have much you know we were using early in the what was the 60s 70s high doses of aspirin i mean it was, it was bizarre mm -hmm. ringing in the ears and all kinds of trouble you know with these products and stomach issues and and whatever to clear down to where we are now with you know with a, a leave and some of the other products that are pretty commonly used so no position other than <laughs> go ahead <laughs> paul this is a pretty complicated issue to talk uh, about with the diverse you know I different know. types of arthritis and I, again i think you know chris said it you got to work with your doctor you got to uh, you got to you know some of these things are trial and error you got to do what works for you and I talked a little bit about keeping a diary and making sure that you know as sure let's, let's say that you know you had a flare up your arthritis and, um, you know, maybe acupuncture, maybe, you know, some other therapy, mm -hmm. working with a physical therapist, keep track of what works and, and, and try to determine what patterns you have and, and how you can get some assistance. And then I think the other thing is don't forget about the other complications of writing. So, you know, we, Chris talked briefly about anxiety, depression, um, sleep. Um, don't um, make sure you get help with those things too. And the Arthritis Foundation can help get you resources that will support you in some of those complications. Okay. So the Arthritis Foundation um, also offers online support groups. Can you explain how those work and how do listeners participate? Sure, I'm happy to. Um, right now, our connect groups is what we call them. Those are our support groups. Um, our meeting in online, you know, Zoom platform, just like we're meeting today. We hope very soon to get back to in person. And what those are, are communities of people um, with volunteer led um, educators, people who bring information to the arthritis community in smaller group platforms. So um, people have to go through a training program. Um, that we have at the Arthritis Foundation to be able to lead a connect group, support group, and they have to do it in pairs. 
And one of the people at least must have a diagnosis of arthritis or be a caregiver of someone arthritis with arthritis. And that is really because of the empathizing factor that the leadership would have with an arthritis community trying to understand what they're going through in their everyday activities. Um, we have both adult and juvenile arthritis um, support group. And instead of just speaking it out, we will send you guys information about how to get connected into the arthritis um, connect group community. But we have um, five different groups that are um, all around uh, Central Ohio right now that are active and working and bringing educational information to people with arthritis. Um, they send out emails when their um, support groups are meeting. They send out what that subject is. Um, those are um, put up on our social media. We email out to folks as well. So we'll make sure you guys have the information to do that. What I would say is there's always room to start more connect groups in other areas of the state that don't currently have one. So perhaps maybe in the midst of where your pharmacies are, we could figure out a way to get a support group started there so that the people in your area and who frequent your pharmacies would have a place to go. So we can talk more about that. Basically, it's just a platform of education and support for people in the arthritis community led by people who have arthritis. So the empathizing factor is there. Interesting. So the Arthritis Foundation clearly is in the business of connecting patients with information and taking their feedback and helping make sure that you can use it in an actionable way. And doctor, I wondered if maybe you could touch on something before we continue on about how important it is for people to take advantage of the Arthritis Foundation's resources so you can prevent and get early treatment. Um, what, what benefits are there from early treatment? Well, several of the diseases, um, actually, if you, it, as they progress, do permanent damage to the joints. So rheumatoid arthritis, psoriatic arthritis, gout, any of them uh, will leave someone crippled. And I think you've seen people with joint deformities um, who have had arthritis for many, many years. Um, so if you, if you get early diagnosis and early treatment, you can prevent that. And that means that later in life, you won't have that debilitating joint, uh, you know, permanently injured. So definitely want to encourage folks to, you know, if you're, if you're concerned, get, get to the Arthritis Foundation, take a look at some of the resources, get to your primary care physician, keep your diary and, and think about being diagnosed. Or okay, very good. Well, we're going to talk at length here about the insight survey when we come back, but I think we're close to break time here for our final break. Okay, you're listening to Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy. Welcome back to Health Matters. We have a lot more to cover this morning, so let's get back to the show. Okay, the Medicine Center Pharmacies are very proud to partner with the Arthritis Foundation to promote the Insight Survey. Can you talk to our listeners about the survey? Absolutely, Brad. So um, back in uh, 2019, we partnered with uh, some academic partners uh, in Dartmouth to try and create a survey that would allow us to understand the impact of arthritis. Believe it or not, um, there had not been any large scale population wide studies of arthritis and its complications. More importantly, we had not looked at regional variation, racial variation, um, and this is a really important thing to understand. So the study started in 2019, and so far we've generated close to 40,000 responses and those responses are helping us understand that there's much more to arthritis than just pain, but that pain is the most significant thing people are experiencing. Um, so I definitely wanna, we need more information. A lot of the insight survey did not, we did not get the information in some of our communities, minority communities, underserved communities. And if you have arthritis, if you have friends with arthritis, it'd be very valuable to continue to get their feedback and incorporate that into the insight survey. You know, I, you can't talk about a survey, especially an online survey these days without um, asking the question about safety and, and um, privacy. Can you touch on those points to, to put patients at ease and let them know that this is a good thing and not a thing to be worried about putting yourself at risk for? Yeah. You know, obviously uh, a, information security is a great deal of a concern. And 
a reuse a nationally um, uh, a national vendor used by most of our health systems to collect quality and and other patient data. So they've got an infrastructure that we're pretty confident in. Most of the data that we're collecting, it's not um, medical data. It's your feedback about you know your daily activities, whether or not you, your, your mood, whether or not you engage with your physician. So most people wouldn't consider that terribly sensitive information, but it's very, very helpful to us if we are able to understand those things that you're experiencing. So I would encourage you, it's, it's very safe. Uh, it takes about 10 minutes um, and uh, you can take it more than once and kind of see how you're doing. As the pain app is released, that will plug into that survey and allow, to, allow you to see how you're improving or getting worse and when you might need help. Well, you know, I think that's important because I was thinking about when we have patients that come in the pharmacy and they think that um, it's a casualty of just getting older when you can't maybe climb the stairs as easy as you used to be able to, or you can't get to the grocery store as easy as you used to. That may be something that's affecting their quality of life. And, and so it sounds to me like your survey set up to kind of attack, to, to kind of quiz those quality of life things that maybe they don't realize are impacted by a condition like arthritis. Would I be right? Right. And, and you can bring that to your physician's office and say, I, you know, I was here and now I'm worse in this dimension, or um, this is how I compare to other people uh, who have arthritis. So um, a lot of useful data. It really puts it in a very clear context that uh, helps you explain what you're experiencing to your uh, care providers. Okay, well, we are very short on time. We have about three minutes. Could you all um, give some comments about some, some golden takeaway key nuggets that you have for the community about the Arthritis Foundation and your survey? And we will be sharing all this information on our website and our social media so people can get to the survey and take advantage of that and, and help themselves. I'll go first. Um, thanks so much, Brad. Um, this insight survey is uh, gold to us. And we would very much appreciate the arthritis community uh, taking part in it. Um, we do ask you for a little bit of demographic information, but that's just so we can uh, report results back to the arthritis community and you know where you are within there. But it's aggregate data back and it's um, very safe. You don't have to worry about it. You don't even really have to give us an email address if you don't want to, um, and you still can submit the data. So just know that about it. We would welcome your input. And I want to just thank everybody in the audience for allowing us to be with you and sharing our information about the Arthritis Foundation today. Yeah, and I would uh, encourage people to head out to arthritis.org and just um, peruse our website and, and check out all the, all the wonderful uh, resources and tools that are available to you there. Um, I'd encourage you to, to join that online community as well, because that'll connect you to, to other people. And then we're certainly trying to foster those types of connections during, during a difficult time. Very good. Um, know that we're here to help with the Arthritis Foundation. Take good care of yourself and be safe. Um, let us know uh, how we can connect uh, and support you and your family. Okay. Um, thank you very much. We, have, we, we really need a lot more time, but uh, uh, we do appreciate you coming on, Dr. J, Dr. Michael Kramer, MD, MBA, Chief Informatic Office, Ohio Health, Susan Davis, Executive Director of the Arthritis Foundation Central Office, and Christopher Haverlock, Associate Director of Community Engagement with the Arthritis Foundation of Central Ohio. Special thank you to our sponsors, Cleveland Clinic Mercy Hospital and Studio Arts and Glass, along with our technical producer, J.D. DeAnzos. As always, thank you listeners for joining us, on, joining us on Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy. Have a healthy week, and we will see you right here next Friday at 9, 10 a.m. on News Talk 1480 WHBC. And thank you very much.